Hey everybody out there, this is Dennis. Uh, Today's episode is kind of a little different than the other ones we've done. We're going to be talking about podcasts. And as I said early on, we're going to be, you know, from week to week deviating from the cord cutting topic that the people from groundedreason.com are used to. And uh, we might get into, um, you know, some other, you know, how does other technologies and how do they affect, you know, everyday folks like you and me. Um, So today we'll go through um, our uh, favorite podcasts, and really, there is kind of a cord cutting connection there because when you think about it, um, Netflix, for instance, um, is uh, video on demand. Well, this is audio on demand, and I can you know foresee it. It's already hap- happening actually that the podcast uh, on demand um, audio is probably going to be in most everyone's car in the next five years. Uh, millions of people listen to podcasts every month, um, and I just see that uh, trend continuing. Um, so today we're going to get into uh, some of our favorite podcasts to give you uh, an idea of what we listen to. And if you're looking for ideas, I know when I started listening to podcasts, I was always asking people for uh, some good shows out there. And uh, today we're going to tell you a few. Um, anything we mentioned today, I'll make sure we put in the show notes. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, if you if you enjoy the show, go ahead and hit subscribe uh, because I'm going to be adding a, a new feature to the podcast where we're, Joel and I are still going to have the show uh, released on Mondays, uh, where him and I will you know discuss you know more of a how to and or various you know technic, uh, technology based episodes. But I may hop on um, every now and then to give a news update um, of uh, something pertinent to the Grounded Reason podcast. For instance, um, if a new streaming service gets released or a streaming service adds a new channel, um, I'll hop on and uh, give you an update on what's going on. And that'll that'll be same day audio. So I'll you know once the news breaks, I will record it and put it up. Um, it's not going to be every week, might be two, two in one week sometimes, but, um, if you subscribe, you'll get those updates as soon as they happen. Um, we're not going to have a sponsor this week, so, uh, subscribe, like I said, or, uh, go ahead and do a review and, uh, that'd be awesome. Okay. Let's get this episode started. Personally, uh, the reason why this is a fun topic is like we're learning as we go. So, so for the audience, the reason why we're or the topic we're getting ready to talk about is podcasts as a uh, content type, like a a way of getting entertainment. Yeah, because I mean, and we we talked about this a bit in episode one, or you know, the first episode we did. Um, on how, you know, just not having the ease of just turning the TV on and being, you know, beamed with content at their will. Right. (laughs) That we have opportunities to go explore other areas and, you know, podcasts are, you know, probably, I mean, next to, you know, Netflix (laughs) drama, like, like Netflix original content and maybe Walking Dead Probably my next favorite piece of entertainment. I, I would, I would honestly say, um, I take in more stories because that's what we're really talking about. Right, mostly is uh, from podcasts than anything else. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because I mean, I mentioned this to, um, like, yeah, I mean, I work where I work. There's a couple old timers, and when I mean old timers, I mean, I mean, like, you know few people in their 70s right. and um i talk to them about podcasts and they laugh because we're really going back to a yeah, time it's no different it's than the no, phantom no different at all i it, mean it's exactly where the same they thing. would gather around the radio and listen to someone tell a story right and it's exactly the same thing the the big difference in my opinion and, and it's actually why i find it more enjoyable a lot of the time than like any of the television uh, delivery we've been talking about is that it is truly mobile. Like you, yes, you could sit around and and listen to it in front of your stereo 
like they did in the old days. Right. But most people listen to it when they're on a walk or right. when they're doing their chores around you the know, house. You know, I've become so much more productive thanks yeah. to podcasts because what happens is, I mean, I can put the earbuds in, and at that point, I am just. I am tuned out to the world. Yeah, I don't mind doing the dishes. I know that sounds crazy, but, like, my wife, uh, she hates doing the dishes. It's just a thing. I actually right? kind of enjoy it because it gives I, me a reason to listen to a podcast. Yeah, it's very <laughs> zen because, like, I just – I but but I am cranky when someone interrupts me once I've got the earbuds in. I'm like, why are you talking to me? Yeah. I am doing this thing that I just like. Just so I can right. have ten minutes to listen to this story. Stop talking to me, right. which well, is not a good. Well, that's attribute. like like I do this maneuver where um you know how you on the earbuds how you have up all in the um on the wire on the yeah. on the right yeah, phone yeah, yeah. how you have like the control the to pause, do the pause yeah, and the yeah. fast forward. I do the maneuver where you know I put my thumb there, but I give like this disgusted look. Yeah, like. <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> see, the, the problem the problem I have, Dennis, is basically that that disgusted look is just my look. Like, that's my face. You have RBF. Yeah, I do. I do. I do and, like, so I've actually, Han has actually said, like, what, what's wrong? And, and I'll say, what are, you, what are you talking about? And she's like, you've got this scowl. And I'm like, babe, that's just what I look like, right? Like, that's just what my face looks like. Um, so anyways, getting back to podcasts, right. like it, it's something that, uh, you know, Dennis and I talk a lot about, we both listen to it a lot and, um, you know, something I think we're both kind of passionate about. Yeah. I mean, clearly we think it's an interesting medium or we wouldn't be doing this. Right. right. I mean, and I'll be honest, I got into it because my wife said, you got to listen to Serial. Now, I mean, I'm sure most of you out there have heard of Serial. Yeah. It's kind of a phenomenon, what was that, a year and a half ago? Yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, come to find out, I started listening to it, and like four episodes in, I, you know, like, I, rewind, this happened in our area. I work yeah. across the street where the school, I mean, if you don't know, I mean, basically, there is a kid um, who is in jail for murder, and... It is kind of unclear whether or not, you know, some people, you know, I'm sure some people think he did it, but it kind of feels like he got kind of a, you know, rough job. I mean, it was kind of a, not, not a very, not the most fair of I, trials. I would say this after listening to it is that the, the case definitely seems iffy and, and there is being a, there is a retrial getting ready to yeah. go on. Right. And but but the important part is it is a deep investigative oh, journalism. Yes, thing. and that's the best part about it is it is not sensationalized no, at all. It is really deep. They it is really scrutinized the heck. Right. Out it's of just face. a deep dive into a true crime. Yeah. And it is you cannot turn it off. No. And 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 like Dennis was saying, what's really odd about this one, at least for for the two of us, right, is like. Literally, it happened down the street. Right. Like, and, and the fourth episode in, I'm hearing the kid's last name, and I'm like, that name sounds familiar. And I go and I look it up, and I I went to school with his brother. So it's very right. close to home for, for me. And I... Yeah, I take my kids to the park where they found the girl's body. Right. right? Like, or I did. I don't anymore. Um, right. Well, it's, but. you know, Leakin Park. They do one <laughs> quote... They say they, there's one part of cereal oh where I, I lose. I laughed. Oh my god, I laughed so hard because it's, it's called Leakin Park, and they say, you know, there are people who have taken a body to Leakin Park to bury it, and as they're digging, they find another body. Right. <laughs> so, so that's so it's okay. kind of known for that. Like but, we said, it's eighty five percent the wire. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Baltimore. That's yay, just, <laughs> yay, us. <laughs> um, but. But that being said, right? Like, so back to podcasts. Back to podcasts. Um, like, yeah, the I would say Serial's one of the ones that that really elevated podcasts as a medium, right? right. Like, it, now, granted, they've been going on for a long time, but even now, I, I think I just sent you this article the other day from Bloomberg, um, where it's something like. 
thirty percent of the uh, people in the United States, only thirty percent, I should say, have ever downloaded a podcast. So it, it, they're really, it's not a very uh, heavily used medium. No, I mean, no, not compared to radio or television, but it's growing and it's easy. Oh, it's super easy. Because it's kind of, you know, you plug everyone, not everyone, but most people out there have a, have a, have a smartphone. Yeah, almost everybody. Yeah, I know. You plug it, you plug in some headphones, you pop it in, you hit Stitcher if you're on Android or use the, uh, you know, the podcast app that comes with your, with, with iPhone. Yeah. And you're off and running. And it's, a lot of the stuff, it's all free. Yeah, and and that's actually I got asked that the other day. Like, if if there are any podcasts, and I don't know if you know this one, but I get I got asked if there are any podcasts that are um, pay, you, like you you pay for them to use them, and and generally the answer is most everything is free. But I believe it's Amazon is getting ready to try and launch a pay yeah. service. I don't know how that's going to go. I saw that. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to fly. Because I know me personally, I mean, and that's how why. How much better is the content going to be? Well, I don't know. That's why I, this one's free. I mean, yeah. and that's because the Ground Reason podcast is free. Because we're just sitting here giving information. Yeah. And I really, I mean, I'm of the belief that you shouldn't have to pay for information. Yeah. You know, and that's Generally why. Generally speaking, yeah. Right. I mean, for for the most part, you know, I mean, intellectual property is one thing, but I mean, stuff where you can just go. I mean, we're not we're not telling any secrets here. It's yeah, just, we're, we're not planting flags like we're we're just kind of consolidating stuff. Putting aggregation, a bit of, you know, yeah, it's aggregating stuff. It's telling, you know, tricks that we've learned on how to do this. Yeah. So I don't see a reason to pay for it. Um, so ours is free. Um, there, but then there's also like, um, like stuff like No Sleep podcast, yeah, which is a horror podcast. Um, they do, they have a neat model where you can, okay, first off, the show comes off once a week and it's like two, three hours of content of stories, of horror stories, short stories. And, um, they give you like about an hour, like 30 minutes to an hour for free. So it's like two or three stories for free. And they never cut it off in the middle of the story. But if you subscribe, you get the whole shebang every yeah. week. And that's a pretty good model, too. I just listen to the free ones. But I know I know plenty of people out there that subscribe. There's actually... So um, there's a lot of people that do this now, that, that write for... Um, podcasts and and produce various things they go to a service called patreon oh yeah and what patreon is is exactly what it sounds like right like they're they're various artists that are creating whatever stories and if you subscribe uh and you pay some nominal fee typically uh you will get premium content now most of these people have free content they have in iTunes or wherever else. And um, example is the, this gentleman out of the UK, uh, Mike Bennett. Uh, he's written a bunch of uh, horror podcasts, short stories, and does a, a ton of uh, like really, really high-quality readings of H.P. Lovecraft's work. Oh, cool. Um and he also has his um, his premium content, which is basically like his new book over on Patreon. And that frees him up to where he can write full time now and like you know pay his mortgage right like right. he can he can make a living and he can write and people that really like his stories can listen to him and that's that and you know people who want to just kind of get exposed to it can you know listen to the free stuff and i have so far been mostly listening to the free stuff but i'm getting ready i think to uh jump on the bandwagon and uh, subscribe over on Patreon. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like there's certain ones I listen to. Um, like um, there's one called The Black Tapes, which is kind of neat because it's um, it's an audio drama. And it's kind of an homage to Serial, but it's more paranormal. Yeah. And um, it feels like if you took Serial and you took The X-Files 
and you kind of push them together. Them, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what the black tapes is. And it's really good. Um, and I'm, I've been thinking about, you know, I've been thinking about donating, you know, to them because I want to keep them going. They do do really good work. There's great audio quality. Uh, and it's um it's a story that goes week to week and it all intertwines. It's not just a, you know, it's 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 a long, long form audio, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. yeah. Um, a serial. Um, oh, ew. speaking of long form audio, we're alive. Oh, that is the one of uh, that's the best. I mean, I don't really so, think there's anything better than I, that out there. Personally, I I think that's top one or two. I mean, like, Expre- and it's free. Yeah, and it's all it's out there. all free. Uh, so we're alive. Just for those of you who haven't listened to it, if you're into this kind of thing, and so uh, break for a second. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about like nerdy podcasts that we find interesting. But the general theme is there is so much stuff out there in terms of podcasts that is worth a listen. If right. we're not talking about the particular ones you find interesting, believe me, you'll find whatever something. you find interesting. Right there, and then so some of them are just so so niche. Yeah, like oh. there's one where it's kids playing D and D. Oh yeah, like they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. And that's the podcast. Yeah. And if you want to hear people, kids play Dungeons and Dragons, you can go out there. I can't remember what it's called. Sorry, guys. But but it's out there. <laughs> oh, so, so back to We're Alive. What it basically is is a spin on a zombie apocalypse. Now, uh, let, let's – well, one clarification. Kind of zombie. Well, it's – Zombie-ish. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a zombie purist. So, I mean, Zombies? I don't get it. I, I don't know. I get angry. Not. I don't get angry about it. But I, there's definitely times where I'm ruffled. Like I, the things in 28 days later. Those yeah, aren't. Those. That's are what they call zombies. Right. Are, they, I, is that what they call them? If they call, if they run. Yeah. There's zombies. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. There's. Well, there's. Okay. I'm digressing here. I'm getting on one of my tangents. Um. But I have to. I can't. I can't stop myself. Yeah. Um. The thing that the what I love about the zombie genre is the slow methodic shamble of the zombie towards the person because there's all this you know intrigue kind of going on in the person's head because it's like this person used to be a this zombie used to be a person so and you know now i gotta shoot it and that's that's really the heart of the zombie that's the skeleton of the zombie genre right there (laughs) and Go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Uh, so well, what I was going to say is what that reminds me of is uh, something that's also worthwhile if if you get the chance and you've never done it is uh, iTunes University, tons and tons of stuff. Um, it's similar to podcasts, uh, at least in delivery. Uh, but there is a particular one, I think it's from Alab- University of Alabama, that I listened to, um, and it was all about zombies and literature, and it's this idea of the uncanny, meaning like, you know, very close to looking right, right. but doesn't look oh, yeah. right. Well, that's the that's the eerie stuff, is when you see, like, something humanoid. Yeah. It's not quite human. Yeah. That that's really gets you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it does. It's, it's, it creeps you out. And and that's what I love about the zombie genre. Now, not to say I don't like the movie Twenty Eight Days Later. No, it's, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's just in my mind they are not zombies. It's not the same. It's not zombies. And 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 we're alive is zombie esque. It's it certainly is more so than Twenty Eight Days Later in that I believe the creatures are dead, right, and have come back. But yeah. either way. The point being, <laughs> We're Alive is fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. And, and uh, it is this huge ensemble cast of very, very talented voice actors. Some of the best voice acting I think I've heard. Yeah, and, and they just do an amazing job. And, and it's all free. Yeah. Uh, another one that I love, which is much more like what you were talking about with the short horror podcast, is called Pseudopod. Um, and actually, Pseudopod is, uh, the horror podcast. It's all short fiction horror. Um, you know, mostly weekly, uh, and it's just great. I think the host is out of, uh, 
the UK. Mm-hmm. And they have uh, three pillars, actually. They have Escape Pod, which is their sci-fi one. And then Podcastle, if you're into fantasy. Uh, which is not my thing, but lots of people love it. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I like... Uh, I mean, we're Game of Thrones fans, you know? Yeah, but, but I set that in its own category. Oh, yeah, there's, that is. It is it's, kind of its own there's thing. There's just games... It's, a, it's its own thing. What about Tolkien? What's that? Tolkien. Oh, again. Different. Separate thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like... It's like how the movie Evil Dead 2 isn't a horror movie. No. It's a... It is a masterpiece. It is. is, a, it, it, is. is. it is a piece of art. It is... When I think of Evil Dead 2, there's like a shining gold VHS yeah. I, thing just I do kind not of glowing there up it. on the shelf. I do not compare no. Evil Dead 2 to other movies. No. It, 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 it's, you can't. It is, it's beyond... It's above movies. Yeah. The only thing, <laughs> I, 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 so for anyone who actually knew me, they would know I am a huge Bruce Campbell fan. So he, uh, Evil Dead Likewise. 2 is, is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Ar- Army of Darkness, I like. I, I but that's just a movie. But it, but that is a movie. I can right. compare that to other but things. But I like it. It's funny as hell. Yeah, it's great. But <laughs> Evil Dead 2 is high art. Oh, definitely. Um, so, yeah, get, getting back... <laughs> geez, we got off topic. But getting back, like, for a sec. Like, there, there's a bunch that are great, you know, comedy and, you know, all sorts of different other things. Uh, one thing I definitely wanted to mention while we're talking about this is uh, there's a, a, a site called uh, patiobooks.com. Which is, uh, you can get to it through iTunes, but you could also go directly to the site. And it's basically um, podcast chunks of books, typically read by the author. And uh, it's, not, it's not exactly serialized content. It's basically like chapter installments of it. But it's a way that authors release their books for free. Right. Uh, one of... The, pretty popular authors that just put their stuff out there is a guy by the name of Scott Stigler. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's written a bunch of really good, like, sci-fi, horror-esque books. So check it out if you get the chance. Patiobooks.com. Yeah. They've got some great stuff. I mean, now, up until now, I mean, we've pretty much been talking about kind of the fictional oh, yeah. kind of podcast, but there's this whole other realm out there. Of, you know, more, I mean, there's some really unique fact-based shows out there that are great. I mean, this is an NPR show um, that I listen to, Invisibilia. Have you listened oh, to that? great show. Oh, it is fantastic. And, um, like, and did you give me an idea of the stuff that's on there? I mean, I think the, the theme of the show is kind of like the invisible things out there that make us human. Now, I know that sounds kind of NPR-ish. <laughs> Because well, it, it, but... it is, but it's fantastic. And to give you an idea, um, one of their most recent episodes, they took a woman who's in her sixties, who has Asperger's, and she didn't like back when she was younger. They it didn't it wasn't a thing. It didn't get diagnosed. Right. But so she just has instances of like she doesn't understand why she's being treated the way she is, like she's being treated and such. Well, come to find out, there's like these clinical trials where. You can get um, it's a it's a magnet kind of electromagnet treatment that'll actually stimulate certain cells in your brain, and the unique thing about this is it's like it gives her thirty minutes of being able to interpret emotion because that's the thing with Asperger's if you're not aware right. it's kind of not that, all, that there's a spectrum it's not you know it's not you know if you have Asperger's you can't interpret you know social emo- social you know our social cues it's degrees you know some people can do it better than others when when they're diagnosed with Asperger's but this woman was pretty you know she could not really like she would for instance she would see two people putting up a sail on a sailboat getting ready to go out and then she would go and offer help and then they would get angry at her and she's wondering why and it's because they're out on a date she couldn't interpret the fact that they were kind of being you know kind of intimate with one another right and she would just go and say oh these people need help I know how to put up a sail but no, you know, so, but, so, right. and that, that gives you the instance. Well, the cool thing about this, and this is what really kind of grabbed me, um, she goes in for the treatment and they show her a video of um, this person who is putting 
um, DVDs. Like basically, somebody gives her a bag of DVDs. She opens the 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 actor. It's a vignette. The actor opens up the the DVD case and then shows it to him to to the person who gave the bag back. And she's like, she's like, and he says, you know, well, John John returned these. She's like, looks at it and it's empty. Shows it to him and the DVD case is empty. She's like, oh, he's like, so are you going to lend him your DVDs again? And then she says, no. I mean, then she says, she says, yeah, yes, I would. I'm sorry. She says, yes, I would. She puts it down. She does it again, opens it up, shows it to him. He's like, really? She's like, yeah, I would let him borrow the DVDs again. And then, you know, she puts it back, scene's over. And the, the, the person, the person with Asperger's was like, that's really weird. Why would she do that? Why would she give those DVDs? Why would she lend that guy DVDs again? So then she goes and she gets the treatment. And then she comes back. And she watches the scene again, same vignette. And she, this time, she sees the fact that the woman's extremely angry. She's slamming down the DVDs when she closes them. And when she shows the DVD, the empty DVD case, then the guy says, so would you lend that to him again? He's saying it sarcastically. And she's responding very sarcastically, like, right. yeah, 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 I would lend him again. That wasn't picked up at all the first time before. Well, she couldn't pick up she, any of the information. She couldn't. She couldn't get any of that before. And and that to me was an insight that I've just never. I mean, yeah. I know what Asperger's is. I've read about it, but to hear it from a first person point of view, where they're actually explaining how it is with and without Asperger's, fascinating. And that's the type. That's the type of stuff you get on Invisibilia. It's like all like that. Like every episode is something like that. It's very intriguing. Yeah. It reminds me of, like, um, the other NPR one that I listen to. Well, I, I subscribe to it, so I listen to it whenever they have a new one, right? right? Like, cause I'm, I'm way caught up on them, and I've, I've listened to at least a, a big chunk of their catalog, is uh, the TED Radio Hour. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So everybody knows what TED Talks are, in all likelihood, but... Um, the nice thing about TED Radio Hour is what they do is they'll take a, a couple of TED Talks that are really good centering around a theme, and they'll uh, take pieces of whatever the topic is out of the speech, and they will um, they'll splice them together with other ones with uh, commentary from... You know, whoever's giving the speech. And it, and it's really amazing. I mean, like, they had uh, some on, like, cosmology the other day. And, like, you know, just uh, just amazing topics. And, again, uh, the fact that it's free to me is kind of crazy when yeah. you think about it. Yeah, because it's, I mean... It's not as hard to produce as, say, like a TV show or a movie, but it's it takes time. It takes some effort. It takes a lot of effort. And, I mean, it's right? not that they don't get paid. There are sponsors and there's Patreon and things like that. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's, it is it is shocking that it's off. Most – to have such good quality and have it be free, it's, it's something special. All right. I, I'd be remiss if we didn't – touch on really quick a couple of our favorite like oh i got a little bit of time we can yeah we can go on all right so so just really fast we i know uh i i've mentioned it once or twice or or you have uh the nerdist oh yeah Um, i listen to the nerdist more than i listen to any other podcast i I would say I i listen to all of them i highly recommend the way i turned uh Dennis on to Nerdist <laughs> is the Will Sasso episode of Nerdist. If you get the chance, yeah. If you don't know Will Sasso, um, He's I think from Mad TV. Yeah, Mad TV yeah. was kind of like his most, like that's where most people would probably know him from. He was in the Three Stooges movie, the reboot. He played Curly. He played Curly. Um, I can't. I mean, I know he's been in other stuff. I just, I'm, I'm having. I, I, yeah. He's not really my cup of tea most of the time he wasn't until i listened to the nerdist until i listened to this <laughs> and i was like man this guy is a maniac and he was hilarious yeah and if we want to keep this um we, if we want to keep the e for explicit off of this podcast we really can't get into any of but, the details but i highly recommend it but like, i highly if gonna, recommend it if you're gonna go check out the nerdist that's great also all of the patrick stewart ones oh like, yeah and, and it, it's, it's if 
it's Chris Hardwick. I mean, I'm sure you know, a lot of people out there know this already, but you know, Chris Hardwick, he does um he does at midnight on Comedy Central, talking he does Talking Dead, dead talking everything. I think cuz there's like preacher talk, talking now, preacher. Yeah, yeah, or whatever it is now. Preacher. Is it yeah. Talking Preacher? Yeah, Talking yeah. Preacher, that's the name of I would, it. I would prefer it to be Preacher Talk. I don't know why. I, don't I, know. I think that they, sounds better. They, they <laughs> got on him the other day uh, on Nerdist. He's like the about, Linda like, Richman of yeah. like AMC talk shows. Oh, like he's, he's with his coffee it, clatch groups. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, But he's great. Like he's great he at is. what he does. He's a fantastic host. He's ex- – I, I – and he no. runs the he runs the Nerdist, and it's really I mean the theme it's a lot. He's a comedian stand up, so uh, he has a lot of stand ups on, which yeah. is great because I love stand up comedy. Uh, can't do it myself, but I love <laughs> listening to him. Uh, I can't. Uh... And uh, but but he also it's it's kind of he also hits the theme of kind of like there's like this general like technology and humanity kind of you know he gets on that but yeah, it's hysterical he's, he's it's funny it, yeah and, 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 and you know it just it, the, the guy is is great at what he does and he the guests that they get on that show oh um it's it's the letterman of po- i mean it's like yeah it's, everyone it's the letterman of podcasts it I mean, really is and they're on episode like 800 and something right and right they they've had everyone in entertainment, almost exclusively entertainment, but they did have oh god I can't remember. He's like a contemporary of Neil deGrasse Tyson the other day. Oh, Akeem, oh hold on. Uh, yeah, he's great. Um, and he was fantastic. So while Dennis is looking that up, the other one that I wanted to mention is uh, how did this get made? So if you ever watched on Comedy Central way back when, uh, a show called um, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh, How Did This Get Made is very similar to that. Uh, It's got June Diane Rayfield, Paul Paul Shear, and Jason Manzukis as the hosts. Um, And they bring guest hosts on. And basically they just review uh, movies and like, uh, you know, crack jokes about like, yeah. How is it possible that this movie was oh. made? Oh, it's great, and, and it is a fantastic show. Oh, by, by the way, it, it's a uh, Hakeem. I'm going to screw this up. Hakeem Alosei, is yeah, that right? I think that's is right. That, okay, and his interview was amazing. Yes, it was. It was guys great. a genius. Yes, oh, literally, like actually a yeah. genius. Right? Like, <laughs> I know that that's an overused expression. Right, he is actually legitimately yeah. a genius. Yeah. Um. Well. Oh how yeah, how did this get made? made? I my favorite, one of my favorites is um okay, Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Use. Oh yeah. That is when they they break it down hysterical. First off, they pointed out the fact, and I didn't even when I saw this movie as a kid, but I didn't realize if you were looking to go and find out what the ooze is like what the secret is they never tell you're you. not getting there they and they point this out <laughs> and they they point this out immediately and i'm sitting there thinking you're right like the whole premise of the movie never gets there it my, never never my, <laughs> one of my favorite ones they ever did was a movie called birdemic which oh. if you've never seen it is horrid and it in its it's so wonderful to watch if you enjoy bad movies because it is just terrible. Right. Um, and they point out that you go 47 minutes into the movie that's probably 87 minutes long without ever seeing a bird <laughs> in a movie called Birdemic. Yeah, that's a I mean, like, that's amazing. <laughs> and so it's stuff like that, and, and they just, they're very, very funny people, all professional comedians. Yeah, it's Paul, um, Paul Shear. Right. Yeah, Paul Shear and Jason Manzukis from the league, and um, he plays Mitch on um, Fresh Off the Boat. I don't know if you watched. Yeah, that yeah, 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 that's yeah. another great one. Yeah. And uh, his wife, uh, Paul's wife, June uh, Diane Rayfield, who is on Grace and Frankie. Right, she was a stand-up watch. at one point too, wasn't yeah, she? I, I believe they're all. Yeah, at least formerly. They're stand-up. really funny, all three of them. Um. And they always have a guest. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. And, oh, another one of my favorite. They always usually have a guest. Always. Yeah, always really usually. Really precise. Really precise <laughs> language there. Um, but uh, Patton Oswald has been a guest a couple of times. He, he, anything that features him 
as a guest. He's hilarious. Every, most people know who he is. If you don't, well, and he, check uh... out his stand-up, but the <laughs> easiest way to give you a point of reference is he's, he's the ref from that cook, He's the ref from that cooking movie, right? Yeah, he's <laughs> ratatouille. But but long before then, he was a and and still is a remarkably funny. Uh, uh, he's hysterical. He's probably one of my favorite. Comedian. Yeah, one of my favorite yeah. comedians. It, the funny part is, is he can make comic books funny to people that don't read them. Like he, I've seen him do a half hour on comic books to a pretty mainstream audience, and they and killed. If you ever get the chance. Look up his routine on Bob Ross, and I will tell you, I nearly peed myself. Yeah. It is amazing. Right. Um, so, so those are a lot of. The, I mean, like, there's a couple, you know, other noteworthy ones. Um, if you like history, there's one called Hardcore History by uh, a guy of the name of uh, Dan uh, Carlin. It's like military history. Really, really, really good. Uh, long. But it's history, so the guy spends, you know, hours on a topic. And then uh, Freakonomics, for anyone who enjoys that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, I read the book, um, and it's... The book's directly behind you. It, right. Oh, yeah, it's it is. On the... <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it, the, the podcast stays very true to the book. It's yeah. very, it's, it's, it's like a chapter. It's behavioral economics. Yep, yeah. it's like a new, like it's like a, the, the book just keeps going with this podcast. Yeah, so I mean, I don't want to go through every podcast I've ever listened to, but. No, but I think something like this might be helpful because I know when I was first getting into podcasts and if you've, if you've come over from groundedreason.com just to listen to this, then you're kind of probably, you might be new to the format. And um, I'm always, I, initially I remember looking like, what's good? What should I listen to? And right. it, there aren't many sources out there, at least ones where I, that I could find where it would lay it out for me and let me know what are, what are good things to check out and to listen to. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do here is kind of give, try to provide some insights to people who might be new to the format. And that's actually something that's kind of noteworthy, at least that I've noticed, is that... Um, People that that produce podcasts, especially the the big dogs like Nerdist and How Did This Get Made and et cetera and, and uh, all of the NPR ones, they are extremely good about recommending other podcasts. Right, like they will all mention, oh, if you like what we do, check out so and so. Yeah, and you know we're trying to pay it forward, but. Uh, also, like, I, I, if nothing else, if anything we talked about kind of appeals to you, check it out, and if you don't like it, they'll probably tell you one that you might find, you know, more interesting when you listen to it. So. Yeah, and, and feel free, I mean, because, like, when we'll put this up on the website, drop some comments on the page if you want to recommend some other ones, because people might stop by and they will not, you know. When you, they want to, they're, they're looking for some Heck, I'm always somewhere else to go. For right? Ones. Yeah, me too. I mean, I would. I'm always, always I, looking for something. I found to. one last week from a buddy of mine that is very. How did this get made? It's uh, what was they telling you it was called? It's uh, we hate movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is another good one where it's very mystery science theater. Um, a lot of I forget their names because I just started listening to it, but really funny funny set of guys so. all right so i think we're gonna wind this one up because you know the night went quick it's getting <laughs> it's getting late yeah all right so take it easy out there okay thanks for listening um we want our listeners to uh be involved in the show so if you want to go to our facebook page we've pinned um a post at the top you can put your comments in there and um, any something you liked about the show, something you didn't like about the show, any uh, question, comment, go ahead and throw it in there. We'll get a dialogue going. Joel and I are monitoring the Facebook page so, you know, we can, you know, discuss things. Uh, future show idea, go ahead, put it in there. Or you could also tweet us at Grounded Reason. You can also go to the website at groundedreason.com forward slash podcasts and all of our podcast episode show notes are there. So you can go ahead and just drop a comment in there and uh, we'll get back to you. Again, thanks for listening and we'll catch you next week.